Many of the parks and monuments we visited feature canyon settings. Natural Bridges National Monument in southeast Utah preserves some of the finest examples of natural stone architecture in the southwest. Three large natural bridges were formed when meandering streams slowly cut through the walls of deep sandstone canyons. Our friends, Fred and Tanya Richter, were spending the summer as volunteers here, and we were able to stay with them in their park housing. Fred and Tanya were able to recommend lots of day trips, destinations like Monument Valley, the Goosenecks, Valley of the Gods, Arches National Park, and the Moki Dugway. And together, we spent a couple of days exploring ancient Indian ruins. Canyonlands National Park, also in southeast Utah, preserves a colorful landscape eroded into countless canyons, mesas, and buttes by the Colorado River and its tributaries. We visited the Needles area, one of four large, unique districts in the park. The temperature was 102 when we arrived, so we restricted our first afternoon's activities to a tour of the area in our car with a couple of short walks. The next morning, we hiked the Chesler Park Trail, which travels through a slot canyon. We were on that trail by 7.30 in the morning to beat the heat. The trail crossed slick rock, passed fascinating rock formations, climbed up and down small canyons, and yes, went through a very narrow slot canyon. We finished the six mile round trip in just three hours, but the temperature was already 95 degrees when we returned. Since there was absolutely no one around at the campground, we used the camper's outside shower, sans clothing, with straight cold water. Felt good. The cooler, less crowded north rim of the Grand Canyon is in north central Arizona. As advertised, the canyon overwhelms your senses through its immense size. We hiked partway down the North Kaibab Trail as far as Supai Tunnel. That was a four mile round trip with a 1,415 foot vertical drop. The trail was pretty neat with some amazing overlooks. Unfortunately, it's also used by mules carrying tourists, so you have to dodge their waste. During our stay, we also drove the 15-mile rim and overlook tour, stopping at all the overlook points and walking the short trails. The overlooks are sometimes as spectacular for their exposed physical locations as they are for the views you get at the canyon. To experience Zion National Park in southwest Utah, you need to walk the trails among the towering cliffs. Public access to this park is from the valley floor, not from the rim. The park has an excellent shuttle bus system to transport folks around the park, eliminating almost all congestion. The shuttles arrive at stops every eight minutes or so during busy times, so that the wait is rarely annoying. Zion has lots of interesting day hikes of all difficulty levels. We did quite a few of them, but drew the line at Angel's Landing. We did walk to the start of the famous Narrows, where you wade through the Virgin River as it courses along a slot canyon. However, we were about to get a heavy downpour, and since the Narrows often floods, we decided to leave before things got ugly. Between Zion and Bryce, Cedar Breaks National Monument is a three mile wide, 2,000 foot deep amphitheater carved out of the 10,000 foot high Colorado Plateau. The rock colors in the amphitheater were spectacular. We also hiked the Alpine Pond Wildflower Trail. There, we found a profusion of wildflowers like we'd not seen earlier on this trip. Bryce Canyon consists of a series of horseshoe-shaped amphitheaters carved from the eastern edge of the Panchagant Plateau in southern Utah. The first afternoon, we drove the 18-mile road to the north end of the park and visited the overlooks into the canyon on our way back. Although beautiful to be sure, they seemed a bit repetitive. We knew that we needed to get down into the canyon for a closer look. 
The next day, we hiked down into the canyon for an up-close look. We descended Queen's Garden Trail, doing the Peekaboo Loop Trail, and returned to the top via the Navajo Trail. What an extraordinary landscape we got to see. I just couldn't stop taking pictures. Our hike included lots of strenuous vertical hiking, especially the switchback return of Navajo Trail to Sunset Point. Capitol Reef is not exactly a canyon, but protects a grand and colorful geologic feature called the Water Pocket Fold in South Central Utah. The fold is a 100 mile long wrinkle known as a monocline in the Earth's crust. The two mile, 950 foot climb to Cassidy Arch, named for outlaw Butch Cassidy, was physically challenging as well as beautiful. Along the way, we had a close encounter with four bighorn sheep. We also walked the path into Capitol Gorge to see the Pioneer Register. Here, early travelers recorded their passages through the reef by scratching their names and dates into the sandstone rock walls. Modern day petroglyphs? Capitol Reef is a beautiful place indeed. Yosemite National Park in East Central California was one of the first wilderness parks in the U.S. It is best known for its waterfalls and landscape of heavily glaciated monster rocks. We first headed for the valley with its visitor center and hordes and hordes of people. The summer had been even drier than usual and the waterfalls were a disappointment with barely a trickle of water. We were delighted though to be able to identify about 25 climbers in about five groups who were climbing El Capitan. Typically it takes two to three days to climb but the record is under three hours by a guy who free climbed it. More pleasant and spectacular were the days we spent above the valley hiking trails and visiting overlooks that gave spectacular views of the park's geology. Crossing out of the park from the northeast corner, we got to see the other unglaciated side of the mountain. 